It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery, Spot Shooters Archery, Easy Cut, Packer Max, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Scent Lock, Scent Blocker, Limb Walker Game Calls, Buck Bates, Gut Check, Stanislavski Release Aids, Copper John, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Sense Vapor Hunting Products, and Rebel 6 Rubs. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on goodtalkradio.com. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal Podcast. Everybody, I'm host Mike Gadd. I'm sitting in the cabin tonight on a fresh trip back from Indiana, and I'm sitting here with Dan DeFall, and we're going to try to connect with Ken Cicluna here later in the show, so keep your fingers crossed. Hopefully everything works good. But uh, before we get started, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about Hunter's Blend Coffee. Make sure you guys use the UNJ promo code, which you can see right there on the screen, and that will save you 10% on your order of Hunter's Blend Coffee at huntersblendcoffee.com. And we've got ours. Coffee good for you tonight, Dan? Yes. Tea very tasty. All right. And uh, we've um, also got our promo code for Rebel 6. Rebel 6 Rubs. Go over to their webpage. Use the North Journal promo code, as you can see there on the screen. At rebel6rubs.com, you save 20% on your order. Yes, uh, for that one, it is working now. It I, is working, Yeah, okay. we had some issues during the week. Uh, I checked with Rob. We got it fixed. It's now working to that. Okay, good. Yep. And the last one is Buck Bates, which we're going to talk a little bit about tonight. If you go over to buckbaits.com and use Up North Journal, you'll save 20% on your order there as well. So... Some of the people who help us are helping you to save some money. Got to like that. Absolutely. So you done over there, Dan? I'm ready. All right. So so what's been going on, Dan? Oh, I tell you what. A little cool, a little crisp in the air weekend. Yes. Um, kind of the sign that deer hunting's, well, we've had the Liberty Hunt and Youth Hunt this weekend. Yeah, a lot of deer already going down. Yeah, some nice ones we Kids saw. are out there slamming. and uh, The veterans we saw oh, at 11 point got taken. I forgot to download the picture. Hmm. Picture of what? Randy Duncan's boys, Nolan and Christopher, they both got their hunter safety certificate. And they went out squirrel hunting. They went out squirrel hunting. Today was open day of squirrel season here in Michigan. And Nolan called and Christopher shot. So they've got squirrel in the pot for tonight. Christopher? Oh, Nolan called the squirrel. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm, you he, said, was, he was the lookout and had, had the okay. call. He was using you know, the little baffle yep. you hit on the end. Yep. I, when you said call, I thought he meant call you no and no, then, no and no. then chris shot live i'm like wow <laughs> no 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 that, that's pretty good no no it uh they sent me a picture of, of them with their their game in hand and uh i forgot to download it so i apologize for that but uh here we are it's the 15th two weeks from tuesday october 1 archery in michigan will commence in indiana and in, in indiana and probably a few other states as yeah well. there's a bunch of other states but yes, we have been getting ready. You just got back from Indiana yesterday. You mm-hmm. took you took a quickie trip down there. Yep, I was in the UP over Labor Day scouting, and Ken was down south of Michigan scouting a new lease parcel in southern Michigan. In southern Michigan, so, so everybody is getting after it. Everybody's getting an af- getting after it. Um, we just finished up our. Tune up leagues. So we're tuned up, right? Yep, yep. I'm ready to rock. And uh, every week things get better and better and better progressively. So shooting uh, the Evolve 28 is ready to rock for archery season. Absolutely, I am ready. Um, do you want to go first, or do you? Do I want to go first? Uh, I don't care. It doesn't matter. I don't me. care either. Um, well, I was up over Labor Day, Labor Day, so I'll go first. How's that? That works fine for me. So uh, Labor Day weekend, I went up to the cabin um, to build a blind, mm-hmm. uh, to build a stand, and uh, I pulled, I had five trail cameras. Okay. And something, umpteen thousand pictures. Okay. Um, but I went through them in the evenings while we were in the cabin and uh, started looking to see, kind of taking inventory of what's going on. Okay. Uh, so... One of the cameras uh, did. I figured we got three bucks that are probably going to be hit listers. We would consider shooting. Okay. Um, this one right here was the first one to show up. Uh, he's showing up 
he showed up, I think, in two cameras that are on the same 40. So I think I got his travel pattern where exactly where he's going. Okay, for the people who are on the podcast, explain the buck here because they can't see it. Exactly, right. So uh, on the podcast, it's it's going to be a typical UP buck, if everybody knows the UP of Michigan and how the bucks run. Uh, a nice basket eight point. Um, in my area, the bigger ones tend to go deep, so to speak, and they, we tend not to pick them up. We might catch one cruising through if we do, but they seem to go way deep into the public land or private land. Okay. So that way, um, we we, we kind of set up parameters around camp about, uh, you know, maybe shooting nothing less than an eight point, depending on where you're at. And uh, for us older hunters, we're kind of holding out. The younger hunters, um, uh, depending on where they're at, we, we might let them shoot an eight point or a six point, but nothing less than that. And APR is anyways in the Upper Peninsula. Okay, what's going so, on with this picture? Okay, so I got to ask you about this because this is uh, the reason I pulled this was I knew it was a buck. That's fine, mm-hmm. but what do you think would make that on the lens or in the picture? That's what I wanted to ask you. I was like, I was like, this when I was flipping through them. This one uh, for the people on the podcast, uh, it I, I I can't explain it. I don't know if it's a a bug, a twig, or a, I think it's a bug flying. Okay, personally, it, you and, know, ju- and just the the a couple bugs that the, are flying in different directions, and they just happen to get caught, and that was the trigger speed or the shutter speed is the, the okay. camera was open that long, and he, he, that that was the flight path that caught at that time. Okay, I can I go guess. with that. that I, I'll go with that because I didn't know. I said I got to ask Mike, I or it's a no, UFO, <laughs> two of them, <laughs> <laughs> or X marks the spot. Right, right. So uh, this next one is a nice for us. Is a nice mainframe six point. It's got no brow tines. Okay. Uh, deer tend to run with or without. Uh, we notice a few sixes. Um, they come in. It'll be just like this one. It'll be no brow tines, a nice six point. So that's going to be a nice one. Okay. He might or might not make it. Um, that one looks like it has brow tines. Yeah, this one's got brow tines. This one, I, I'm deba- I don't know if it's the same one as in the first pick. It's another eight point. Um, I don't know if this was is the same deer or not so i gotta look into that a little bit more uh there was one picture i i missed that there was another eight point it had longer tines you could definitely tell it was a different buck it was a it was a more tighter rack but it was still an eight point gotcha so three eight points look to be on the list and hopefully we'll have some rut going on and drawing some other bucks well looks like there's some rutting and rooting and tumbling going on here all right so this camera here i got it pointed at a mineral site which we're allowed to use in the UP. Mm-hmm. Uh, typically how I, I set it up is I, I find a stump, pour the minerals on it. Uh, when I set the camera, I'll pour corn around it and add minerals. Gotcha. Uh, Mr. Bear here, he, he came in pretty quick after we set this up initially. There's actually, before this, there's a few pics of him where he's just laying down, eating. Face, okay. face in the corn, face in the minerals. Stuff in his face. Oh, yeah. He wasn't going anywhere, and he was quite happy just to lay there. But on this particular night, he came in, and he kind of hung around there, a few picks, and all of a sudden you get this pick here. And then all of a sudden, the next pick, it took me a minute, and I'm like, wait a minute, what happened? So this is the same it, This is same camera. Yep, same camera, one pick later. They don't so, line up. <laughs> no, they don't line up. They uh, actually... I noticed this when I uh, I came to this camera, and I looked at it, and I said, well, that's not facing the right way. So it looks like Mr. Bear got a little interested in the camera and decided to turn it 90 degrees. He swatted it. Up. Which, you know what? It, it wasn't a bad idea by the bear because it helped me see uh, other deer that were coming in. Right. So it was all right. It, okay. As long as it didn't knock it off the tree, I was quite happy. That was uh, one of the issues that I had um, last year when I put up a feeder, is he climbed the tree and got to the feeder. So, but this year, uh, he, um, he just didn't like the camera pointed at him, I guess. And he just turned it 90 degrees. So it was one of those things. You just, this is a mess. I know, right? You got to clean it up. You got to clean up the office. <laughs> so that's kind of what we looked at. Um, we reset the cameras. Uh, I'll be going up for the first weekend in October. Um, so we'll pull the cameras right when we get up there, see if anything's changed. Uh, the spots are kind of set and we're ready to go. But, uh. Looking forward to it. I did put out a couple mock scrapes uh, using uh, the buck baits. Um, so I hope to, I, and I put cameras over them on video, so I hope to have some some good uh, reply back. So so you left a party invitation at the scrape? I, I, at the scrape? I left a party invitation, 
and I left my calling card down there. There, there Indy. <laughs> and there was some their deer watching me make them, which was kind of kind of funny. So, but uh, yeah, excited. Two weeks, two weeks, and uh, it'll be two weeks from Friday probably. Okay, that I'll be up there. Probably Saturday morning I'll start. But yeah, excited. Uh, deer on camera is always good to see. It's just around the corner. It is. Uh, so I noticed uh, one of the bucks taken by a youth was still in velvet, and another buck taken by a veteran was here in michigan yeah wow so okay yeah pretty wild that's different yeah so um it's time folks it is time man it, it we're right on top of it it's uh it ain't gonna be long you know and it felt so good to get back down and get outside this weekend that's uh it just it re- rejuvenated me well it's that's the thing just getting out in the outdoors and you know especially when it's got that cool christmas to it mm-hmm. it's like all right it's time it was cool down in, uh, in Indiana yesterday morning till about eleven o'clock, and then it got hot. got real hot. Oh, okay. How, how hot. hot did it get down there? Uh, Mid eighties, I think. It was it was pretty pretty sweltering. Pretty sweltering. So. Nice. But yeah, so we're ready to go, ready to rock up in the UP. Uh, you went to Indiana. How's that looking? Well, this is our our I guess our food plot. <laughs> <laughs> looks looks that's the bean field man i tell you what um beans as far as you can see yeah it the beans have really taken off and when was i down last about a month ago i think i don't know but i tell you what man the beans have really just they have really taken off um let's see if i can yeah right here's a picture of me standing next to them i mean it's it's almost belt high it's it's mid thigh there's some tall beans yeah i mean it's it's pretty tall right there so that was uh, that was pretty cool. Be- 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 beans like their warm nights, don't they? Evidently, uh, but you know what else likes beans is the deer. Uh, you know, and you think this time of year that the deer are starting to get off the beans, you know, because the, the the leaves are, are not as palatable, right? They start getting a little bit bitter. But uh, so far, they really haven't stopped. <laughs> <laughs> well, they look pretty green to me. So you know, they 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 were still hitting hitting the beans, not quite as hard, but. You know, I want to take some pictures, just show a little bit of the the browse on the beans. And they were browsing, huh? Yeah, they it was were, a, it was a smorgasbord. Yeah, they're they're still hitting them pretty regular. So uh, that that to me was a little bit surprising, I guess. But uh, I tell you what, uh, we're rumping up here on our, our first break. Why don't we go ahead and take our first break, come back, and we'll kind of get into doing yeah. some mock scrapes down there because that's that's what I went down for. So. Absolutely. So I tell you what, we'll. Uh, We'll step outside real quick. When we come back, we'll continue the conversation. We'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back, second segment of the show. Wayne sitting joins. Hey, Wayne, what's going on? Glad to see that you're you're checking us out tonight. Glad you're you're back up and at him. Right. All right. So so you're down there checking out the beans. We were mm-hmm. just talking in the break that well they haven't stopped eating the corn either. Yeah, yeah. They're, I didn't take any pictures of the corn. I should have, but uh, yeah, they're still on the beans down there. So and Ricky the raccoon was enjoying it as well. Um, yeah, the raccoons are tearing it up down there. So uh, actually, we met with the property owner, and they said they would like for us to control the population of raccoons. I can imagine there. There's a t- all that food for them there. Yeah, well, you know, a deer will walk up and they'll eat the ear of corn right off at the stalk. But a coon will take and pull the whole yeah, stock down. Yeah, they'll pull it down until yeah, it breaks. Yeah, and so. it, it looks like somebody went through and just trashed their room, you know? Right, exactly. So, you know, you, you sit there and you look at that and you go, yeah, they, you need to you need to take care of them. But, uh, yeah, I went down and hung out with David. There's Big Dave. Got uh, got our tools and got everything ready. And uh, as you know, we've been doing some work with Buck Bates here. And so we took some product down to do some mock scrapes. Absolutely. We got our mock scrapes. I started mine over Labor Day. You started them yesterday. Yeah, we got down and got dirty. And uh, the thing that, that kind of surprised me, well, it didn't really surprise me, but when we got down there, or I got down there, the ground is so hard and baked and dry because they've had no rain. Oh, Every, is it really? Everything is just dried right up. Oh, you know, the, okay. the, the creek that runs by, 
the property on the edge of the property it's it's pretty much gone really yeah the oxbow backwater uh creek is is completely dry so so would you consider they're in a drought would you consider it's just they a dry some, time of the year they or? need some rain they need some rain they okay. need some rain so we're trying to scratch in some some uh scrapes you know we had some issues with it i mean it it was hard we actually took a like a little shovel that had some teeth on the end of it so we could actually dig a little bit and turn just a little bit of soil ground like cement yes <laughs> right yeah i mean and actually to scrape it out it it was pretty tough just wow. to just to get some uh some dirt and dust up well I, I hope whenever you're down there you don't get the rain part that's what i worry about so but uh you know they sent us some uh Earth scent and uh, human odor blocker. Yep. Or odor breaker. So I sprayed down my boots. I didn't take my hunting boots down. It was so doggone hot. And I also put on my scent lock uh, rain pants. This is the first time I've wore these out in the field. Okay. And I bought these for early season. And I thought, you know, it's going to be hot. We're going to be in the woods. I need something that's is going to hold down some scent. But all, it, also, I want to see how breathable these things really okay. are. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. They worked great. Did they? Yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't busting a sweat. They, uh, you know, kept me comfortable. So, I was very pleased at the fact that that they worked so well. That's awesome. Good to hear. So, yep. Yeah, did a little bit of spraying down. Got my boots all ready to go. So we get in the field and and we went at it. And I see you got your easy cut backpack over your shoulder well right here the, this is getting ready for the first scrape and we want to put a camera up and yep. these are the new cutty back cameras that we put oh up. yeah okay we're still having some issues getting them connected not connected to each other but getting them connected to the the service to actually send us the photos okay is that because of location you know of or you don't mm, know don't know how to hook it up we oh. got the instructions and Either we're really missing something or something's not right. So oh, okay. So not, I'm not happy, put it that way. Sounds like you need to make a call to the... Well, that's already been done and we're still having issues. Oh. So, Ouch. Just going to say that's that's where that's at. But uh, yeah, we did some trimming. I uh, made sure and took the sling pack with me and we had to trim out around the trees so we could get our cameras up and got our scrapes ready. So uh, after we did the first scrape, and I didn't shoot any pictures of the first scrape, because uh, I was running video right. at that time. But uh, you have actually, I think you've, you've heard me talk a little bit about the stingy nettles. Yes, a so, little bit. So this is where we set the second scrape up. And there they are, in all their glory. How and they... actually, these were cut down quite a bit, because usually they're about arm height. Well, I think when you went up there in July, mm -hmm. you said they were pretty high. Yeah, they're almost armpit high. These aren't. No, no. No. David, come through. This is a trail leading in. I don't know if you can see, but my stand is, is I'm facing my stand as I'm walking in there. Oh, okay. So, um, and I need to do a little bit of trimming there to get uh, where I could actually see. Now, if, in this photo here, I'm, I'm reaching up, cutting a limb so I can see to shoot on a runway. But if you look, you can see the opening. That opening right there is where, on that edge is where we put the okay. the second scrape site. So, we, uh, here's a couple uh, let me see. I'm trying to find these pictures here. I'm kind of skipping around. There I am cutting another limb down. Aren't those nice for when you got to reach up? Yeah. And I, you, I you love like, them. Oh, it's, oh, wait. I can extend the handle. Now, if you look at that tree that's shining right over top of my head there, that's where my stand's at. I don't okay. know if you can see it very well there, but that's where it's at. And a little more thick stuff here we're cutting out of the way. It looks pretty thick in there. It, it is, uh, but we're just trimming up the one. But right here's where we put the scrape up. So right on the field edge... Got a nice overhanging branch right there off of a walnut tree. So be a good spot for looking Looks branch. like a pretty good invitation. That's a CRP field there. A huge bedding area. Oh, yeah. I, I, obviously. That was, when you got grass that high, that you could you could literally lay down in there and walk right by something and not even know. Well, there's spots in, in there on the other end that is actually almost head high. Yeah, that's what I mean. It, yeah, you could lay yeah. in there, especially for a deer when they lay in their wind, you know, putting their, their back to the wind back and actually the wind. they've uh they on the right side of this picture along that tree line uh there's a good swath of it that's kind of beat down a little bit it's not quite as thick and they'll lay right up against that that edge of the thick stuff thick tall cover okay that's where the bedding is. they're right in there right up against that thick stuff right so just using that thickness of, of the the weeds for them so yeah we scratched it out there you can kind of see the dirt and then uh actually i i jumped no, I guess I didn't. The one thing I want to talk about real quick that we did on, on these on three of these is 
and I don't have the product here with me in front of me because I, I left it down there for David to use. But uh, the the spray the the stuff I sprayed my boots with the Earth Scent yeah an odor blocker the neutralizer yes after we scraped up the dirt because it was so dry and so hard you know David and I got to talk and I was like well, you know what if we put this down and it's it's going to create a curiosity of Earth that has been turned over you know how fresh dirt oh smells. right I get what you're saying so we thought we'll spray we'll we'll scratch out the area get it all clean. And we'll spray that. We misted it on there until we just got just a light sheen. And then we waited and let it dry. And once it dried, then we put it, went in and we used our scrape enhancer on okay. top of it. And uh, talking with the company, they said that, yeah, as long as you let that dry, once it's on the, on the soil, let it dry and then, then spray that on top of it, it's not going to kill this scent. Ah, okay. So it, the the most important thing is letting it dry. Yeah. Don't put this down first and then spray neutralizer yeah, because it does exactly that. Right. So if you use this on top of it after it's dried, no problem. Oh, okay. I see. I, so, cool. Yeah, we 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 did that on three of them. So we're trying to uh, create a, another curiosity. It's like, oh, there's some moisture. You know, you smell fresh dirt. Must, you know, water. Yeah. Why? Why is it? Why is it? Why is it here? Why is yeah. it fresh? Why is it? What's what's mm-hmm. what's so curious about it that you? And you know, deer, they're curious animals. They will yep. come and look. And then I left the calling card. Right, exactly. So hopefully, and you put the video cameras over those. Yeah. And you switched on them on the video. Yep. yep, yep. Turned with the video. I'm running about a minute of video. It's a lot of video. We put bigger cards in the cameras. But that way, we're going to see the interaction and hopefully get some, some good video of what they're doing in these scrapes. Right, exactly. And, you know, just, you know, some people say, well, it's, it's early. Can you do too many scrapes? Um... Can you do too many? Yeah, that's a question posed I, by my brother. Um, I we didn't put them in close proximity to each other. The first one and the second one. Uh, let's see, let me throw this back up here. That's the second one there, and you could see that CRP field. Let me let me go back to that overview picture and kind of explain that as we're going along here. I got I got too many pictures. You know, technically, you really could if you if you were to put them like all over the place. But yeah, like okay, so you you kind of see how th- that picture comes to kind of a point down there at the end. You know. It just to probably the left third, it's kind of hard to tell. It looks like one continuous line, but the right side of the picture is the right side of the field. The left side is the left side of the field. Right. It comes down to a point kind of in the middle there, or just almost the middle. Right. And the first scrape we put is on the left side down at that far end. It's about 300 yards. Okay, so 300 yards to the second scrape. You know, technically, really. And if it, when they get heavy into the rut, it, what's to say they, they don't make more scrapes anyways? They could, yeah. Uh, but that's the thing is we didn't want to put a bunch of them and put them real close together. Right, exactly. The third one that we did is along that right side that you see in the picture there. We put it along the right side about halfway between these two. And uh, and this is it here, right up along the, the wood line there, the, the the trail leading down through there right up against the wood edge. You know, when, you know, like you said, you got three scrapes in this field. And the curiosity, and once you get them going might get them moving in your advantage well and that's it you know we got cameras out we want to see we want to take inventory we can age class them we can also look at direction of travel because you can see you know the the, ho- the hooves in there and which direction they came from what direction they're going so uh there's lots of things we can tell about this question from charles byram mm-hmm. did you use your own urination in any of the scrapes no no i did not there you go i know people who do absolutely Yep, but no, we we strictly stuck with the buck bait uh, scrape enhancer, and here as you can see, we're misting the uh, the scrape with with the uh, the earth. Right, exactly. So earth we followed it. that recipe. You know, and somebody had mentioned earlier that, and I don't I don't think it was Charles. Maybe it was Charles. Somebody commented on there that they had uh, never seen that much dirt turned over, and I said like it was a, Charles. Yes, there's not a lot of dirt turned over in these. I mean, they look like it, but it, it, it we had to scratch and scratch and scratch and scratch to get to get any dirt at all to a powder form to where we could actually make it look like something's been done there. And every and I and I want to say that every deer is different how they make a scrape. Some deer will make a a scrape literally twenty four inches in diameter and, and 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 really scrape it out. Right. And then there's others that are might not be as big and not, might not be as clean. Right. So you know I, I it, it you're just a different deer. I guess. <laughs> right? So uh, here's misting down a little bit of the, the cover scent here. This is a video. I turned the audio down on it just so we can talk over top of it. But you can see there I'm, I'm just putting a light mist over top of it. And uh, this is this is our fourth scrape. And this is in the middle of a – in a woodlot 
quite a distance from the other ones here. It's not in the same proximity, but uh, there's multiple runways coming in together here, and, and these things look like cattle paths. I mean, really? There, there's a lot of travel through here. So we're really excited about this scrape, hoping that we actually get some uh, some good video off of it because we got a camera on this one as well. Exactly. So, and then and there I'm spraying. Now, if you look, look at the, the atomization of that spray. Oh, yeah, when it comes out. Isn't that nice? You know, that's the thing that really surprised me about how much of the product. We did six scrapes, and when we looked at the bottle, there's maybe a quarter of the bottle was used. And you're like, what, what, what's going on? And that's just because you're not shooting out a stream. You're not dumping it in. It's, it's atomizing it, and it, we're just squirting it in one spot, making about a two- to three-inch circle. And having a you know a good sheen on top of the dirt where it actually shows, so. And and you know what? And, and, and talking with uh, Buck Bates when we were with him at Woods and Water, uh, he he did mention that about the the sprayer itself. Mm -hmm. He says uh, they're an expensive part of the bottle, mm -hmm. but because he's spending the money, you're getting that effect. You're save yeah. You're you're getting the most bang for your buck. No pun intended. Right. Out of the product. You're, it's not being wasted. Exactly. So. so. Exactly. 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 But, yeah, it uh, it was a learning experience for me. You know, it, uh, I learned a lot just listening to David. David took the lead on a lot of these. And uh, as after, after I watched him, you know, then yep. I went in and built some myself. So. He mentored you. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, it was a, it was a good time. You know, I, I, I learned a lot uh, just from watching him and. I had a lot of questions, and actually, <laughs> I called and talked uh, with the with the company today. And we spent about forty five minutes just okay. going over some things. So, um, yeah, I, I'm excited about it. I, I'm really looking forward to getting a video back. That's that's the key, I guess. Yeah, that's my hope too. I you know I set up my scrapes, put the cameras on video, and I'm and mm -hmm. I'm hoping that in turn I get it. Um, so it'll be exciting to know uh, the next time around mm -hmm. what we all pull off the cards. There, there's a good shot right there of the circle. Like I, as soon as I got done spraying it, I took a photo, so you can see the dots. Yep. And that's that's kind of the way we did them. There you go. So I, I, I think it's awesome. I think it's a good, you know, let's get let's get them interested and get them moving and get some mature bucks on the on the curiosity and get them moving to say, hey, what's going on in my area? Right. The one thing that we we didn't put out just yet because they also have a a, a tarsal gland. Uh, yes. Lure. We didn't put that out. David wants to wait up and closer to season, but the way he wants to use it is take a stick and he cuts a stick, oh, foot and a half, two foot long. Okay. Uh, and we didn't have any gloves with us either. That was the other thing he wanted to, you know, have uh, scent control over top of this because the way he does it, and then he'll he'll trim it down the end and stick it in the ground. Might be a little hard right now the way the ground. Well, is. I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah, you might you might have an issue. So with that. he might have to go out with a drill actually and drill. A hole oh yeah, and drop you it. know there you go, a drill. Yeah, and then drop the stick in the. <laughs> but he wants to take that and he wants to spray that stick with the the oh, tarsal. The okay, yeah. kind of like to represent a deer rubbing up on it. Yeah, well, it gets it a bit close to the ground, but not on the ground. But it gets it close to the ground where you know a deer's leg is nice about the right height. Nice. So. So, let me put a little bit of this in your coffee. Uh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. So that sounds like you, you sounds like I'm ready, you're ready. You know, it's one of those things it, you just you know, in working with this company and uh spending that weekend with them, it's been a, it's been great and getting these set, I hope we get our bang for our buck. Yeah, right? Right? No pun intended, right? No pun intended. So, no, this is all brand new to me. I mean, I've wanted to do this before and I just I've never taken the time to the extra time to get out and do these, but uh, actually, I'm hoping to get up to our place in Michigan, up in the in northern Michigan, and I'd like to put a couple out there. I'm going to try something a little bit different, and we're going to see what happens. Well, later. that's it. Try, you know, I did them one way this year. Yeah. I'm going to see how they work, and then think about it, and then maybe next year, maybe I'll change it up, or if it worked, and okay, right. But like you said, uh, change it up, yeah. see what what works, because. Yeah. Whether you're in the UP, Indiana, down in Texas, uh, out west, it, wherever, it's all different. Yeah, it, it's it's not a recipe. Yeah, that says, oh, do this, this, and this. Right. So and that's uh, what's nice about it, is everybody gets a chance to do their own thing, put their own twist to it. Yep, absolutely. So, well, speaking of twists, why don't we twist into a break here? Yeah, let's twist in that, and we'll get a hold of Ken and get him on and hear how he's doing. All right, so we're gonna step outside, take our second break. We'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, 
the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market, has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Welcome back to the third segment of the show. We've made our connection with none other than Ken Secluna down in southern Michigan. So, yeah. Ken, you, I've seen a few photos. You, you started putting a few rod and reels away, getting the bow out. Uh, first off, how, how's the new bow treating you? The new bow is, uh, man, I, I, I'm just blown away what it's like to shoot modern technology. I absolutely love the PSC decree. Um, it's it's been really really awesome. I've really I've been shooting almost every night. I've got it dialed in, and uh, I cannot wait to uh, to get it in the deer woods and shoot with it. It's a great shooting, smooth. I mean, I'm just I'm absolutely in love with it. Okay, so what were you shooting before? It was a uh, 1993 or 94 uh, Kodiak, I think it was. I'm not sure. It was an old old compound bow that uh, I bought at a garage sale. For like 50 bucks, uh, my bow had gotten stolen one year, and I needed a bow, and I just happened to find that. And the only reason I know it's from the early 90s is because engraved on it was uh, somebody had shot a six-point and engraved 6.94. And uh, so I know it's at least from 1994, but I think it might be older than that. <laughs> wow. There you go. Yeah. Hey, hey Ken, yeah. right off the bat, we got a question from Charles. Um, yeah. It says, did Ken get a new platform yet, or is he still using the Bowman ring? I am still using the the Bowman ring of steps. I'm pro. I I, I really want to get the uh, the tethered uh, Predator platform or the other platform that's out there right now. I'm saving up for it. I I see myself getting a platform before the season is over. But what I'm going to do, and actually I have my ring of steps right here. As you see, it's a it's kind of a mess. It's cumbersome. I don't really like using it. I'm going to go down to probably about two steps this year and get rid of the other four because, honestly, I never use them, and it's just more noise and things like that. But, yeah, for, you know, right off the bat, I'll be using the ring of steps, but I, I definitely want to get a platform, that's for sure. And for those of you who don't know what they're talking about, they're talking about tree saddles. Yes, so, saddle hunting. So, yeah, you, you and uh, actually Charles out in Iowa, you guys are the tree saddle variety. You know, and, and yes, it, I, I've I've contemplated. I've sat in one, and it's something that really intrigues me. It's just something I haven't made that step yet. Right. And I got I got too many fires or irons in the fire right now to worry about that. So <laughs> one, exactly. One, yeah. One thing at a time. Yeah. All right, yeah. buddy. So you've been out scouting. What do you got for us on your update? My uh, I talked about the UP in the first segment. Mike talked about Indiana in the second segment, and you got the third segment. Yep. So, of course, I have deer camp in the Upper Peninsula, Western End, uh, Ontonagon, Mass City area. Haven't been up there. I won't be there until deer camp. Uh, so I'm just going to wing it for, for gun season up there, which is fine. You know, um, no big deal there. Um, but I just got access, uh, just signed paperwork on a lease here. And actually, it's an awesome area. It's North Ann Arbor farmland. Um, and that, if, if anyone knows anything about the Michigan deer herd, they got a real problem with deer in Ann Arbor. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and so I'm like right in, I'm just North of all that. And there are so, I mean, there are just so many deer out there. You drive around that farm and it's a very high deer density area. And I'm really excited. I spent yesterday and today out there scouting, getting trees ready. I put a camera out today. Um, so it, it looks really good. I mean, all my years of hunting have basically been on public ground down here or small tracts of private land with four or five other guys. I've never really even laid eyes on property this good. And they didn't even farm it because of the wet spring. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still absolutely covered up with deer. Um, there, I mean, the some of the runways look like mountain bike trails. Well, we got uh, we, we got some of the – we're showing some of the pictures yeah. as you talk and, and, and some of the fields yeah. – um, you know, and, and some of the, the trails that we can, we see that, it, yeah, they look like they're, they're, they're pretty good trails that they're still walking along. And, and I'm sure in those fields in the evenings or in the mornings, you're seeing a lot of deer out in those fields. Well, oh yeah. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. throw the picture up as a trail. You talk about trail camp, put your camera up. Um, you got a trail camera for those of you who are looking at the photo. 
uh, the the three four trees there. It's in that that second one to the to the left there. And you yeah, get that pretty uh, high off the ground. Is this so you typically put your cameras up high and point them downward? Yeah, so hunting public ground in Michigan has, has taught me some lessons the hard way. Um, for I do that for one, and actually, if someone wanted to steal that one, they could. But normally, I will use a, my saddle and a stick um, since I've had the saddle, and I'll actually put my trail cameras up high and angle them down. And that's actually angled down on a ditch. There's a ditch, an, an old drainage ditch, and there's a great crossing right there. And I thought that, you know, obviously we can't use mineral or anything down here. I thought, man, it'd be a good spot to maybe get some inventory going and what's on the farm. And I, I, I angled it down because, A, to try to deter theft and maybe somebody wouldn't see it. And then also, too, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've had a big buck on trail camera looking right at my trail camera, and you never see that buck again. You could tell they were just code red alert looking at that camera. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I feel like sometimes, especially here in, in southern Michigan, where you, it's hard to get away with stuff, I feel like sometimes them cameras can hurt you down here if you're not careful. That's just my opinion, you know. But I like, if I can ang put them up high and angle them down, I'd much rather do it that way. Are you going to leave your camera out all year? Not on that property because I don't know if I'll have, uh, I do do that though. I, okay. I don't know if I'll have that property next year, but on some other properties where I know I'll, ha I'll have access for quite a while. Yeah, I do that. It's pretty cool to go back and look at the winter pictures. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that section yeah. of woods right there, and uh, I got another one up there. Uh, it, it reminds me kind of where I'm hunting down in Indiana. The woods look very similar. It, yeah, it's it's really cool there. I mean, it's it's, it's a seventy acre farm. It's all overgrown meadow in the fields, and there's some there's all kinds of good bedding. There's cattail marshes, and then the back part of the property is this open hardwoods that's flooded, mm -hmm. and uh, you can still walk through it. It's just a foot or two deep. And it's real open and flooded, and uh, every time I've been on that property, it's been in the middle of the day, and I'm seeing tents. I think they're bedding back in there somewhere. And uh, so I got a stand, I got a tree prepped for back there. I'm covering both back corners, and uh, I mean, you can see for 100, 200 yards in there. It's really, really nice. Yeah, it's uh, it it looks it looks wet. You know, it has that look to yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I got wet. a picture of a deer rub up. You seen lots of deer rubs? No, I haven't seen too much. I've only that was the best one I've seen, and obviously they're not doing. It's not rut related. I mm -hmm. think it's just rubbing the velvet off. Yeah. Um, but I, I found that one right on the side of a trail, right by that ditch crossing where I got that trail camera. But I am seeing just all kinds of act, very active sign. Uh, you know, just tracks, big tracks, little. Tra I mean, I probably kicked up twenty, twenty five deer over the weekend. I mean, this place is absolutely crawling with deer. And I could not be more excited. I mean, I've never, I've never, I just can't believe I'm actually going to be hunting it. It's, I can't even believe it yet. No, oh, that's cool. I, yeah, I can hear the excitement in your voice. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> when, it's unreal. When you get, a, when you get an opportunity to do something special like that, it's, uh, it gets you fired up. Uh, I know the first time I stepped foot down, down south uh, on the place we've got down there, I was just, I was jacked. So, yeah, it's, uh, it sounds kind of the same thing for you. Um, I, are you going to do anything with scrapes? I mean, Danny and I talked about putting scrapes on. Are, is that something you're planning on doing, or you just yeah. trying to get in hunting mode right now? Well, no, I'm going to do it. I would have liked to have done it uh, already, but like I said, the uh, life's been uh, been getting the best of me here the past few weeks. But things are starting to slow down, and I'm not going to go back out there and mess around. It. I want to just leave it sit all my properties. But I think I'm going to come prepared uh opening day when i hunt and i am going to get some mock scrapes going and especially try to position them so i can get a good shot if one does come up to it i haven't done much with mock scrapes honestly um this will be my first year i think i might have did one in the ub a few years back but i didn't really know what i was doing so i need to get my hands on some buck baits stuff and uh, i'm going to give it a whirl but i'm definitely going to i got three extra cameras laying around so i want to get a couple going at the beginning of october and put some cameras on them well, yeah. I, I know a guy. I know a guy that's got, that's got some yeah. more baits. <laughs> hey, what, what's, yeah. The, yeah. what's the biggest difference that you see from your UP area that you hunt to this this down here? Is it the mm -hmm. is it the agricultural? Are you are you hunting big woods up up north? Yeah. So we're number one deer density for sure. Uh, that's the obvious one, right? But yeah, the terrain I hunt in the western UP it, it doesn't even unless you're up there, words can't do it justice where I'm at. It, it's, you don't even really feel like you're in Michigan, to be honest. Uh, it's 
it's kind of mountainous terrain. It's very, uh, for Michigan, it's mountainous terrain. It's very, a lot of jagged rocks, cliffs, uh, big, big woods too. A, a lot of real deep, dark, scary looking ravines. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, it's, it's very, very tough terrain. It's a lot of wet red clay. So when it's, if it's very tough walking down on the bottomlands and everything, it's, everything's a struggle. Like down here, you have all them thorns and pickers to deal with. Well, up there, it's not so, it's, you don't have to deal with any of that, but the terrain, I mean, that's why a big reason besides health reasons I do cardio is just so I could survive a week up there. Um, you really, it's, it's, it's very tough terrain up there in Western UP. Very tough. Well, it's your property down downstate. How close are you yeah. to ag, big ag? Do you have ag around oh, you? Yeah, so the lease is complete. The lease, even though that didn't get farmed because of the wet spring, everything else around it did. There's not. It's almost all soybeans, which are starting to turn yellow. From And from my understanding, the deer kind of back off them until they dry out in December. But they're totally. it's totally surrounded by uh, soybeans. I mean, 360 all over the place. Gotcha. And I think I think my, I think it is. And I think my farm is like the bed, the main bedding area for around there because where I'm my the farm I'm on is very very thick and there's some cattail marshes and and, and there's uh, some good acorns around. I noticed a lot of hickory nuts, a lot of acorns, so they've got food in there. So, but yeah, it's it's I mean it's it's Washtenaw County farmland at its at its finest. You, you gonna be out there opening day? Yes, I actually just got approved. I took. I took October 1st off. I also took October 28th off because that's a, you know, a day that works out for me. And uh, I will be out there every chance I get uh, on the weekends, that's for sure. How, how Okay, so time-wise, from your door to the property is, is well, how far? He may not want to tell that. Well, no, just... just <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. I, I'm, not, I'm not too worried about that. I, it's, I'm very spoiled. Uh, I have... A 37-acre piece, a 10-acre piece, and now the 70-acre lease, and they're all about the same distance from my door. And you're talking 10 minutes or less to, from all three of these where I'm at. You're and spoiled. So, yeah, that's awesome. That, that, <laughs> yeah. You can so get... I can do a lot of I can do a lot of after work hunts before the time change. I mean, I I many times I'll just come right from work and I'll have my hunting clothes in the truck. And just do the best spray down I can and whatever. And, and just, I mean, I get a lot of afternoon hunts in during the week. It's nice. All right. So we got a, another question in from Charles, our, our Iowa fan. Um, yeah, are you all going to take does when the season opens or can you, or are y'all going after the antlers? I'll answer first. Cause I'm, I'm an easy one. Yeah. I know your answer. No, I can't. We're, we're not allowed to shoot does. So nope, I will not be. Ken, what about you? Yes, I uh, I absolutely will. I'm hoping to get out for early doe season. I believe it's next weekend. I could be wrong on that. Um, I'm going to try to get out for early doe and knock one down. And uh, I always have a public land uh, doe tag and a private land doe tag in my pocket at all times. And uh, I, it doesn't matter what time of the year, if I will shoot a doe if I need it, if I want one. <laughs> Yeah, it, same for me. Yes, it, 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 it doesn't matter if it's down in Indy or up here. Either way, opportunity, I'm taking it. It's uh, there you go. You know, but I am I'm I'm going to be very choosy on the bucks that that I target. I mean, yeah, it, it, yeah. I was showing Danny some photos uh, from from down in Indy, and it's it's night and day. But the, the small bucks down there, we're going to let walk. If they were up at our place up here in Michigan, there's no way they they'd be taking another step. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, uh, right. It's so, a different ball game. Yeah, it's yeah. a whole different ball game. Well, but yeah, that's, I'm going after. I'm going after both. And, and like for Ken, as soon as he starts getting you know pictures back of his cameras, he's going to start to see that oh, I've got this in the area or I've yeah. got that. So he yeah. might become as far as your he might bucks, become picky too. Might become very picky, right? Yeah. And we were just talking about that with the Indiana property, and, and same thing with with my property. It, it's these cameras and getting them out there early enough to start taking this inventory it it, it, it it's nice it, it, it's i'm not gonna lie the technology is awesome well there's such a drastic you talk about mm-hmm. the the from from down uh, from another state to michigan but even from where i'm at in northern michigan northern lower to the up um you know expectations of what's realistic uh for box to be able to harvest right is it's different yeah. for me and you danny you absolutely know, just simply of what you've got available I, 
I think that's the key statement right there is what's realistic for your area, Mm -hmm. you know, um, and, uh, time will tell, you know, like Danny said, those cameras will help you figure that out. And, you know, it's tough for me. I I definitely, I, without a doubt, if I could hit a button right now and make APR statewide, I would do it. Mm -hmm. But here's the other thing for me, I haven't shot a, a lot of bucks in my time. I've never shot a big buck. I've never even seen that many big bucks. Uh, I've been hunting over bait for 17 years. I just got rid of bait last year. And I'll be honest, like, I'm not going to lie. Like, yes, I want APRs, but I still, like, I think I still enjoy shooting a year and a half old. I still want to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, But in my mind, I know it's, you know, it's better to let them go. And if I could put that restriction in place, I do it right now without Mm -hmm. a doubt. Because I think it's the best thing for the state. But I still have, like, I haven't shot enough deer yet where, like, I feel like I'm just not at that stage yet where I'm wait, I'm passing on three-year-olds for a four-year-old. Like, right now, I think I will not shoot a year-and-a-half-old deer. I, my my goal for this year is to shoot a two-and-a-half-year-old. Mm-hmm. There you go. You know well, what I mean? At least what I think. That, that's my goal, you know, which will most likely be a point. Um, but uh, it's tough because I do have an itch and trigger finger. I like shooting deer. And it, <laughs> it, it, it's going to be very hard for me. Like, if a nice basket rack six point comes in like i'm not gonna lie like i'm gonna want to shoot that thing but i know where i'm at i don't want to burn it i don't think it'd be smart to burn a tag on that thing yeah well that that's Especially the other part of that right three months yep you yeah got, you got three months of hunting and if you like i said you start getting a radio return on your your inventory and you start seeing yeah those 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 get pat nope oh, nope that's passing because you never know what the yep. next one's going to be right well that's how i wound up passing on a two and a half my first two and a half year old buck mainframe eight and it, it was yeah. it was the biggest one of the biggest deer that i had seen that season and i let that thing walk and everybody was just freaking out about it because i had <laughs> video of it and they're yeah. like why i said and i showed them the trail cam photo of a four and a half year old 10 point and i'm like this is why you know i said yeah. because i know he's here Right, and you don't want to yeah. mess that up, and 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 like you said, Ken, you go ahead and you you you, you know you're starting to show you know as, as we all always seem to get older and that you know you're taking that next step, but not knowing, sure, why not shoot that six point mm-hmm. if it, it's the first buck I see, why not, right? But the next picture on the camera shows an eight point, he's gonna be like, eh, okay, maybe I'll hold off. Yeah, and here's another monkey I have on my back, and maybe some guys will think I'm silly for this, but. I have never shot and recovered a buck with my bow and arrow. And that's a huge, I don't know why, but I really want to get that monkey off my back. I, I want to say I, I finally got my bow buck, you know. So if I'm on public land and, you know, a nice year and a half old buck steps in front of me, I might take it. Right. You know, just to, just to, just to get that over with and move, and move up and, you know, just move on in my hunting career. Just for a mental thing, I, I might do it. I haven't made up my mind out to see it in the moment because I am going to hunt a lot of public. I'm not going to burn out that lease. Right. You know, I don't want to overhunt that lease and ruin it. So I've got a lot of other options on public. And uh, so that's just kind of where I'm at. Yeah. I, you play the wind, you know, scent control, yep. play, play everything right. And yep. Stack the odds yep. in your favor, uh, especially on something exactly. like that. Exactly. So yeah, I love. I heard you guys talking about scent control. I I love scent control, and I know some guys don't do it. They just strictly play the wind. Some guys are all about the scent control. Ooh. I'm like, why can't we just do both? Right. You know. Right. And some guys, if, if, it's, if it's not going to hurt you, why not do it? Right. right. And some guys, mm-hmm. like you said, sometimes they play the spot. Right. They won't. Yeah. Hunt a, they won't hunt a spot till a certain time of the year. Right. A certain time of the year, and that's usually, everything. Yep, they leave it totally alone. They won't go there. I'm just going to pick a date. I don't go in there till till Halloween. Yeah, and right, cold. exactly. Or some guys will they'll wait. They'll be really picky. They'll say, you know, it's got to be a cold front. I mm-hmm. want a rising. Oh yeah. I want a, I want a rising moon at four thirty in the air. I want an afternoon rising moon or a setting moon at mm-hmm. a certain time and the wind. Are, and they won't hunt it until all those stars align. Yeah. And those guys are usually pretty successful. Right. Well, my brother, my brother has a has a message for you, Ken. It's called join yeah. the join the club. He hasn't yeah. shot a, he hasn't shot a buck with his bow yet either. Yeah, I've I've shot a lot of bucks. I just have I've say I'm not proud, but I I've, I've probably three or four that I have not recovered, and it makes me sick still to this day. And uh, I need to get that done because the, the bucks I've shot have been with a shotgun. Well, I got a question for you that I that I want to save because uh, we we run over here. Uh, okay, we got about seven eight minutes left in the show, but I want to throw okay. a little break real quick. Come back and I'm going to ask right. you this. 
We're going to step All outside. Right. We'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a vapor shooter? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back, fourth segment of the show. And uh, before we went to break, I said I had a question for you. And we were talking about, you know, shooting a buck with your bow, getting the monkey off your back and all that. You know, the question is, when you're in the stand and you see deer, like maybe it's a doe, maybe it's a small like a spike horn or a fork horn, and you know you're going to let it walk, do you still draw on that deer to get get that maybe anxiety out and get used to drawing on a deer and practice that draw? to where you're not getting busted. So when the time comes, you've got it down or is that something you've not done? No, I, I have done that. I always make sure that my finger is behind my trigger on the release. <laughs> right. I, 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 I have done that and I'm very careful to make sure that, um, my, my fingers behind the trigger. I want to make that perfectly clear. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I have, especially on, uh, cause I'm not ever going to shoot a yearling. And, uh, but I like to do that with the dumb yearlings who, even if they do bust you, sometimes they still stay. Right. Uh, and, uh, I've done that many times. Absolutely. Because as soon as I know I'm not going to shoot a deer, my heart stops pounding and I calm right down, mm-hmm. you know? And, uh, that's my biggest thing is, 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 is calming down before the shot. And that, I have done that many okay. times. I think that I, see, I, I don't do that. I just let things, once I, once I realize that. That's it. It's not a shooter. Mm-hmm. It's like, right. okay, I'm not going to shoot. But I'm. what I start to do is I start to pay attention as to what's going on and what he's right. doing or yep. he and she are doing. And I start to see what, what how things play out. And yeah, matter, I mean, I, you know, and, ahead, and, and, you know and, Charles, and Charles says uh, he uses scent control, the wind, the spot, the moon. He plays it all. Right. Well, why, it. Not? why not? Why not stack why the, not? Uh, If you're playing cards with somebody, why not stack all the cards in your favor? You know what I'm saying? Right. Whatever game you're playing, it doesn't matter what it is, but you're going to take every right. advantage you've got. It's like, oh, no, I don't need that advantage. You know? All right. You know, I mean, I, I will say people who use long bows and recurves versus compound, I mean, they're giving up that advantage. But you know what I'm saying? When you've got certain things Absolutely. that you can do, you, you take those advantages and, and make the best shot you can. Yeah, and everyone's different. You know, there are some guys that I, I think that like doing it you know, I mean, you, you take, I hate the name drop here, but you take a guy like Dan Infault, who is mm-hmm. a big buck serial killer. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, he's, he's, he doesn't, he'll hunt in blue jeans and, right. and a shirt. You know what I mean? He doesn't do anything. And the guy has got a barn wall full of huge bucks, you know, and then you got Eberhart who does everything scent control. So yeah. I think it's just do whatever works for you. Everyone's different. And like you said, you keep stacking them odds in your favor. Eventually it's going to pay off. And that's how I feel. I totally agree with you, and that's why that's why I like using the cameras, mm-hmm. scent control, every everything. You know, unfortunately, like I got, I'll have a week in the UP. Okay, that's my week I picked. Now, whatever weather I'm going to be dealt, mm-hmm. I got to play that. That's that's up to me. Mm-hmm. It can, and I guarantee you, it's gonna it's gonna swing from sunny to rain. Oh uh, yeah, maybe to snow. But it's like it's like it is what it is for the week. Well, that's what uh, David told me. He said, "Bring every stitch of clothes that you got, warm, medium, and cold weather gear." He said, "Because yeah. uh, in October in Indiana, it, it can be a blizzard or it can be ninety. So, right? You know, it's uh, it just depends on." And, and Ken hunted the UP, so he knows how that works. On yeah. November fifteenth, you can either oh, be boy. you can either be zero mm-hmm. or in shorts. Right. Yeah, it's yeah, and up there, man. I mean, nothing beats a heater and a blind. That's for sure. Right. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I, I really expect that you're going to get this done this year. I just, I, I feel it. And uh, I can't, uh, I can't wait to hear the story, but yeah, I can't wait I'm for excited. the phone call. Right. When, but when you do, man, <laughs> and you get ready to pull back, just take that deep breath and, you know, steady your nerves and everybody knows what yes. that's from. <laughs> Breathe deep. Yes. Aim small, yep. miss small. Yeah. So that's right. Um, you know, just look at the spot, man. Don't look at the antlers. Yeah. Once you know it's, it's, it's done deal, just look at the spot. Execute the shot. Yep. And keep yeah, practicing. I, I've been, 
yep, I practice. I have a shot process that I, I run through that's been working for me, at least during target. I'm yet to try it on a deer, um, but uh, I have a shot process that I go through, and uh, hopefully I can just remember to do it when at the moment of truth. If you practice it enough, it'll come natural. It always does. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So anything else going on with you that we need to know about? Is everything pretty no, well? Fishing's yeah, done? Fishing's pretty much done. I'm definitely going to get out one more time. Um, you know, I've got these. I've, I've been, I just got access to three, and it's a coincidence that so they're all 10-acre pieces. I haven't even looked at them yet. Um, I'm hoping to get out and look at them next weekend. I mean, but at this point, it's like you can't hunt them all. I work a lot. I've got a kid, a family. So it's like even if I, I you can't only hunt so many of these spots, you know. Yeah, so right. I can't, you know, it's, I mean, it's a good problem to have. And, uh, but, uh, I'm just pumped up, man. I mean, this is a very special time of year and just like everyone else, I'm, I'm geeked beyond belief. It's, uh, it's coming fast, man. It's going to be here before we know it. And, you know, all of a sudden it's going to be Christmas and we're going to be talking about what we did this last season. So, oh, I know looking ahead to next year. Hopefully, that's what, hopefully we'll be talking yeah. how we used our rebel six game rubs <laughs> <laughs> to prepare some meat. <laughs> right. Oh. Uh, I know it. I know it. I, we'll see. How, I mean, I might be in the woods now. I might uh, be doing an early doe hunt next next weekend. So uh, All right. we'll see what's happening there. We might uh, we might be following a blood trail next weekend. I never know. Is he taking gun or are you taking bow? I'll take the gun. Oh, yeah. What well, was that there? You broke up just a little bit. Yeah. I'll, I'll use the gun. Yeah, okay. I'll use the gun. Um, just get in there, get it done. If I can drop one where it stands without tracking it all over the place, I'll do that. There you go. <laughs> Make yeah. make make some sausage quick. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't have any hangups about using a gun if I can you know if I if I can you know, right I'll, on I'll use a gun every time. All right, well I tell you what we'll go ahead and we'll wrap up the podcast portion of the show here and uh, then we'll we'll hang around for a few minutes see if anybody's on the live stream has any questions for us. But uh, all right, everybody that's out there on the podcast, uh, we got one quick question. Okay, go ahead, Charles Byram to Ken. Have you caught a fish from your saddle yet? <laughs> <laughs> that'd be interesting I, maybe i could put it up maybe i put it on the trolling motor <laughs> oh he, he's got a challenge now right yeah we could be C- in trouble catching here. a fish from yeah. a saddle You're right well <laughs> it looks like the poll uh it just changed again and we're still uh about two-thirds of the people said they're not ready for archery season yet so guys and gals yeah, guys get out there get after it get ready because it's going to be here in two weeks here in michigan so y'all take care that'll do it for us this week we'll talk to you again next week and don't forget you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m eastern time on goodtalkradio.com this episode was brought to you by pse archery spot shooters archery easy cut packer max hunter's blend coffee scent lock scent blocker limb walker game calls buck baits Gut Check, Stanislavski Release Aids, Copper John, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Sense Vapor Hunting Products, and Rebel 6 Rubs. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.